In the spring of 2014, I accepted a tenure track position in the exercise science department at Bellman University. I'd recently earned my PhD from the University of Illinois and was eager to begin this new chapter in my life. Although, to be honest, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect when it came to living in Louisville, Kentucky. It didn't take long, however, for me to fall head over heels for this wonderful city, a place that has this unique blend of Midwestern politeness and Southern hospitality. Indeed, this is an area of peerless beauty, with an incredible history, all of which contribute to an incredibly distinctive cultural identity. This is a place that is unique, quirky, and weird in all the best possible ways. It's a people who are welcoming, energetic, and proud. Indeed, there are many superlatives and nicknames associated with this fine city. Fall City, River City, Derby City. We're known for bourbon and basketball. It's a city of compassion, creativity, innovation, and of course, greatness. Five years later, I too am proud to call this wonderful city my home. I've grown to love it, I fiercely defend it, and I passionately support it. This is how I sincerely feel as a resident of Louisville, Kentucky. As a behavioral scientist, on the other hand, and certainly as a concerned citizen, no less, I do recognize that this place is not without its faults, especially when it comes to health-related outcomes. Any way you look at it, in terms of preventable conditions or early mortality, Kentucky consistently ranks in the top 10 worst or bottom 10 best in the nation. I share this information not to upset or embarrass or to discourage anyone, but rather to highlight the fact that there's a silver lining to all of this. That is, when you're at rock bottom, you have nowhere to go but up. As a behavioral scientist, I find this to be incredibly encouraging, as the time for system-wide intervention is ripe. But I still understand that, taken as a whole, these challenges may seem quite insurmountable. Often, it isn't the mountains ahead that wear you out, it's the little pebble in your shoe. Indeed, we can overcome these challenges, and improve as individuals and as a society. What we can do in order to move forward is engage in greater amounts of walking behavior, in physical activity. Now, please understand, I'm not selling exercise specifically, but rather more engagement in a physically active lifestyle. And perhaps one of the best ways in which we can do this is via engagement in walking, for leisure and transportation. But this city and state greatly struggle relative to leading physically active lifestyles, and we can experience considerable challenges in terms of actual walking. Unfortunately, there's limited to no statewide policies designed to support active lifestyles, which may contribute to some of these poor values or rankings that you see here in front of you today. As a result, it's important for us to further examine our social determinants of health, that is, the conditions in which we live, play, work, and age. How might such factors serve as potential impediments or facilitators to behaviors like walking? Well, if we look at standards for walkable communities, we see that Kentucky falls short in every single category. But has it always been like this? What we see here is an image of downtown Louisville at the beginning of the 20th century. Everything that you see in black here is a building of some sort or a structure. Near the end of the 20th century, things looked quite different. Buildings were bulldozed, communities destroyed, all to make room for the mighty automobile. Here's another image we have, this time downtown, looking south from the Glassworks building. This picture was taken in 1926, prior to urban renewal. This is the same view just 50 years later. Indeed, like many American cities, Louisville has often built for cars 
rather than people. And unfortunately, it's a trend that still seems to continue today. This is a wonderful illustration that highlights how we've really sort of surrendered this once public space almost entirely to cars, essentially pushing people off to the side, onto the sidewalks. That's if they're lucky to have a sidewalk to begin with. Now, please understand, I'm not necessarily anti-car, right? But what I do take issue with is the fact that we've historically prioritized the movement of cars over the movement and subsequent well-being of our people. Indeed, this is a car-centric city. And many of us suffer from a car-centric mindset, making engagement in active transportation quite difficult, especially for walkers. If we do choose to walk, we're often forced to make risky decisions, or we're faced with unnecessary barriers along our way. It's no surprise, then, that Kentucky has been identified as one of the top 20 most dangerous states for pedestrians. But it doesn't have to be this way. On March 18, 1958, a man by the name of Thomas Merton found himself walking the streets of our city. During this walk, he experienced a sudden insight that led him to redefine his monastic identity with greater involvement in social justice issues. In Louisville, at the corner of 4th and Walnut, in the center of the shopping district, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all these people, that they were mine and I theirs, that we could not be alien to one another, even though we were total strangers, all walking around, shining like the sun. A beautiful sentiment, no doubt. But I wonder if Thomas Merton would have experienced that same revelation if he was driving along Spaghetti Junction, as opposed to walking through town that day, where he saw the sun shine bright. A notion, of course, that is near and dear to the hearts of all Kentuckians. But perhaps it's more than just a pretty lyric to our famed state song, but rather a descriptor of this place, its people, and their potential. Indeed, there are many exciting and innovating th innovative things happening throughout the city to help communities become more active, lead healthier lives, and reach their fullest potential. I wish I had the time to go through every single one of these organizations and feature the amazingly passionate leaders and individuals who support them. I wish I could tell you more about Move Louisville, which is a vision and action plan for multimodal transportation throughout the city to try to make a more connected and sustainable transportation network. I would love to tell you more about Healthy Louisville 2025, a currently being developed community health improvement plan being spearheaded by Louisville Metro Department of Public Health and Wellness along with some concerned community citizens. I regret not being able to tell you more about the encouraging Barstown Road Safety Study which has the noble aim of improving mobility and safety for all its users along one of the greatest commercial stretches within our city. Indeed, there is a lot going on, such as the continued development of the Louisville Loop, a planned 110-mile recreational path, path that will entirely encompass this city, or the recent completion of the Big Four Pedestrian Bridge, a former rail bridge crossing the Ohio River that now connects, connects pedestrians from Louisville, Kentucky to Jeffersonville, Indiana. Or perhaps information about the continued development of Waterfront Park, bringing this once neglected area back to the people. We even have our very own open streets program, known here as Cycluvia, trying to promote engagement in active transportation, and support economic development. It has become my life's work to help promote physical activity across the lifespan, and I have a unique passion for walking advocacy. In this effort, I hope to have God on my side, but I must have Kentucky. So on behalf of the walking movement and pedestrians everywhere, come walk with us and we'll show you the way to a brighter tomorrow starting today. Walking united for what's good and what's right, 
displaying our passions, our will, and our might. We'll walk for the health of both body and mind, outcomes of value to all humankind. We'll walk for the sick and we'll walk for the poor. We'll walk to engage and we'll walk to explore. We'll defend those who walk so as not to lose sight that basic mobility is a God-given right. So stand on up and answer the call. Let's take that first step forward for one and for all. Thank you very much. Thank you.